Welcome back to Tractor Roy. My name is Trent and today we're going to show you how to convert your vintage tractor from 6 volt to 12 volt. These are the only three pieces you need for the bare minimum of converting this thing. You have a 12 volt battery. This is the same size as the 6 volt that's in there so it'll fit in the same battery slot. You don't have to worry about cutting anything out, trying to make it fit or whatnot. We have an internally resisted coil. There's two versions of these. You can either get a 12 volt that's externally resisted or one that's internally resisted. Personally, I like the internally resisted ones. The externally resisted ones have a little ballast resistor that you have to tie in line to it. You don't want full battery voltage going to an externally resisted coil. They're not meant for 12 volts, even though they say 12 volts on them. It'll burn up your points. Uh, there's just too much voltage there. Uh, that ballast resistor drops it down to 6 volts going into, into this thing, so that way the points are happy. Uh, this, the resistor is built into it, so you can bring 12 volts in, and it resists it on its own for uh, to 6 volt for the points. Then we also have a 10SI alternator. You can go with a, a rewound generator, but personally I like alternators. It's kind of on uh, reliability and ease of replacement, I'd say. Uh, as far as reliability, I mean the generator that's been in this thing has been in there for 70 years, so it's good. It'll probably last for another 70 years if you take care of it, but on the off chance it does go out, you have to go find a generator or get it rewound and all that good stuff. Um, this one that we have in here is 6 volts, so it's not going to work anyways. We'd have to have it rewound to 12 volt. Um, there's two different options on your alternator here. So this one is what's known as a 10SI alternator. This is the part number from CarQuest. This is a one-wire alternator. The SI and 10SI stands for Systems Integrated. It has a built-in voltage regulator. It is self-exciting. Everything is all happy just living inside of this case. You don't have to have an external voltage regulator like you do with the generator or with the 10DN alternator. Make sure that when you go to the parts house, it's a 10SI, not a 10DN. The 10DNs look exactly the same from the outside. They're just, they don't have that voltage regulator, regulator integrated into it, you have to have an external voltage regulator, which kind of defeats the purpose of simplifying it like I'm trying to do here. So with this being a one wire alternator, we just have to take a number 10 wire from here straight to the battery. That's it. Put a fuse in there. This is a 60 amp alternator. So probably a good idea to throw a fuse in there, but yeah, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. On a three wire alternator, there are two terminals here. You, to make this work on this tractor, you would take a jumper from one terminal to the other, and then go from that terminal to an indicator light or a push button. So what that indicator light does is starts this thing, or it energizes this thing, it starts it charging. Just that little bit of power draw from that light, that indicator light, uh, starts it charging and once it starts charging then it, it keeps going as long as the engine's running. You can also do it with a push button but then you have to remember to push that button to start this thing charging every time. If you don't put in that indicator light and you just run this you know jumper it down to here then it'll back feed the system. <clears throat> so even if you shut the key off to your points this is still sending power out to the points so it will still run just because this alternator is sending power out. I might have said that three wire alternator one a little weird. I've only done one tractor like that and I wasn't a fan so I'm trying to stick with the one wire alternator from now on. So just as an overview we're swapping out the battery to 12 volt. We're swapping the generator for an alternator. We are replacing the existing 6 volt coil to a 12 volt internally resisted coil. We are removing the voltage regulator. Now as for the general wiring side we will run one wire from our battery to our key switch right here that I have to replace. From our key switch, we will run to the positive side of our new coil. And then we leave this same ground wire here, but we move it from the positive side like it's on right now to the negative side on the new coil. For our charging system, we will take one wire from the output of our alternator to the positive of our battery. And it's just that easy to convert these things from 6 volt to 12 volt. Stick around to the end and I'll tell you a couple other little tidbits that you'll need to know if you're wanting to do your lights and your gauges and stuff like that. But if you just have a bare bones tractor, you don't care about the lights, you don't care about the gauges, that's all you need to do. So we'll go ahead and start with fixing this. Uh, I threw this in there because I was hoping I could just use the existing battery that was in here to try and start this thing. Uh, yeah, this battery's bad. I forgot my 6 volt. 
So since we're converting it to 12 volt, we may as well do everything properly. So all this work that I just put in, getting all these butt splices connected is all for nothing. This key switch was probably good. I think I've only had like one of these. Ah, I guess I've had two of these things go bad on them. Even though they sit outside in the rain, uh, they're usually pretty well sealed. Uh, this one just didn't have a key. My Farmall 240, uh, the contacts inside of here went bad, so I couldn't, it didn't have continuity when I turn it. And then I have uh, my green swather. This outer ring like started pulling off, so the guts of this thing started coming apart. So like it would run if you were in the start position, but it wouldn't run in the run position because all this stuff had just shifted in there. So I had to like crimp it so I could at least finish the field I was on. But these are a good thing to have laying around. Maybe not necessarily a key switch, maybe just a toggle switch, but they do come in handy more often than you'd think. There's a right and a wrong way for these. I was just doing it the wrong way. You want to be able to... There's a right and a wrong way to these. <clears throat> I was just using it the wrong way. When you tighten something, you want it pulling that way. You don't want to push with that top jaw. But this was at a bad angle. So I do what I can. Okay, and then since this is just a... Uh, it's a, a two-position switch. Just position one is off, position two is on. Doesn't matter which one of these we hook up. We'll do yellow to yellow on black to black just because why not? It looks better that way, but it really does not matter which direction you put or which wire you put on which. Just keep in mind if you're getting rid of your push button here and you're going to a key switch, then you would have to add this onto your start terminal. You'd have to add you know, probably this one onto your uh, coil terminal. This one's your common. Now we got a key and a dead battery, so it doesn't do anything. And I don't know about you guys, but I think the key to happiness is right here, as in a key to a tractor. So this is one of the later 8Ns, and it's a side mount distributor, which means the generator is on this side. If you have a front mount distributor, your generator will be on the right side. So this is what we're removing. Um, these other wires that are in here, right here and here, uh, one is for the field wiring, one is for the armature wiring. And this one back here is the one that's charging the battery. So since we're adding in a one wire alternator, we can just reuse this biggest wire that's in here. Just for simplicity, we can get this thing fired up tonight. Realistically, if you've done one of these before, you can probably swap out this system in uh, maybe a half hour to an hour. And I might be pushing it, probably an hour. What I typically do is build a bracket because that alternator is a little bit different uh, size than this generator is pretty obviously. The alternator has mounting points built into it where this is just uh, clamped onto this bracket here. So typically I make my own brackets, but they have these fancy ones that are just, you know, pretty convenient really. So we're going to take this generator off. We're going to take the mount off. This thing will bolt right on to where the generator mounts up. And then for the uh, tensioning side, we got this little bracket. So we'll have to play with it and figure out how it'll work. And another thing I kind of forgot to mention, this is for a narrower V-belt than our generator was. So i got to take the pulley off of this and hope that I can get it onto that. Uh, the other ones I've done, this has worked. We'll see. It's enough to be dangerous with. This alternator is all done, mounted up. This bracket, once I kind of figured out how to use it, really not too bad. As you can tell, again, I'm just going to keep going over this. This mounts on the inside, that L bracket on the outside. The slot on the L bracket mounts to the pivoting flange from where the original generator bracket was. Then you have that long bar that has one hole and then a slot on the other side. The slot goes on the end of this L bracket. The hole mounts to this top ear on the alternator and the whole thing pivots out to tighten. Okay, here's a better view of it. That L bracket comes right here. Goes right back here, up, mounts to that flange, ends right there. You can see where that slotted bracket gets bolted on right there. The slotted bar comes out to this tab. And then when you pivot, it slides. This L bracket hole slides in this 
slot. And that's how you can get your proper tension on it. Okay, our voltage regulator was right down there. I've just pulled it out. On the bottom of this, it will say field, arm, and bat. Well, this is FLD. So the field of the generator is the outside of the case. You have to have a wire going from there. You have to one, have one from the armature, which is the inter core that spins that has all the wires wound around it. And then this one is the one that goes out to the battery to charge it. With our new 10SI alternator, we don't need this anymore. This is only for a generator. On that six volt battery, this is our positive that goes to the frame. And this one's our negative that goes to the starter. Uh, as far as what we are concerned with, it doesn't matter. This will just stick on the negative of the new battery. This will stick on the positive of the new battery. The battery doesn't care which lead is which. You know, the leads don't matter. On the coil up there, we'll just have to remember to put that ground on the negative side of that coil that goes to the points. And then the hot wire coming off the battery will go to the positive side of the coil. So now we're going to replace the coil. This is our new coil. We have our positive and negative terminal. On this old coil, we had a positive ground. So that means that this wire comes off the positive side of the coil because we switched it. So it's now a negative ground instead of positive. We need to have this wire that goes down to our distributor on the negative side. And then coming off the battery, it will go to our positive side. So we'll go ahead and pull this wire that goes from the coil to the distributor off. We'll disconnect the wires going onto this thing. We'll loosen this screw, pull the coil out, stick the new coil in, and I'll see you in a minute. So right here, it says six slash 12 volts for 12 volts with external resistor. If you were to use a ballast resistor, you could have left this coil, but since we're going with an internally resisted coil, we don't have to worry about the ballast resistor. Here's the new one compared to the old one. Internally resisted, don't need a ballast resistor. Okay, there's our coil installed. We have the wire going to our distributor, our negative. We have our positive coming off of the battery and we have the wire coming from the coil to the center of our distributor cap. Another interesting thing to note, this is our negative. This goes directly to the starter. This is our positive. This goes to the frame. On generator systems, I'm gonna say this generally, there's probably a couple exceptions. Everyone I've ran into that hasn't been swapped is positive ground. That's just how generators are set up with alternators, typically negative ground. I don't think, as far as I know, alternators like to work with a positive ground. They don't charge right. Generators don't care. You just have to repolarize the thing for whichever, if you have positive ground or negative ground. Okay, the final portion of our ignition and charging system is our starter. The starter is wound for 6 volts, so it'll spin a certain speed at 6 volts. With us adding a 12 volt battery to it, this will spin twice as fast. We have twice as much voltage. That means this will spin twice as fast in the same amount of time. It, you can get these rewound to a 12 volt. Uh, it isn't necessary. They just spin faster with a 12 volt. A good thing to keep in mind is to not crank your starter as long as you would with a six volt because it, it can overheat because of all that extra voltage. But it does start so much faster because of it. I, my Farmall 240, you basically just push the button and that thing, I mean, it cranks over extremely fast and has no problem starting after switching it to 12 volt. As far as switching it from a positive to a negative ground, starters don't care. They just want power coming into the terminal up here and they ground through the block. So with us going from a positive ground to a negative ground, this thing doesn't care. You just need power up here and you need the battery connected to the frame here. It really doesn't care. So now that we have everything done for the charging and ignition system, we need to work on the accessories. That's the little thing, a little caveat to this. Our lights, for instance, they're six volt lights and they're incandescents. They won't work with 12 volt. When you have twice the voltage going to it, like you would in this case, that filament will get too hot and it'll melt and burn out. The easiest thing to do is just switch it to LEDs, but it's possible just to go down to your parts store, just get a 12 volt replacement pretty simple. Replacing these lights is extremely easy. We just have one screw on the bottom here. You unscrew that and this band will come off. This light is a sealed unit. It just slips inside of this housing. So when you go to the parts store, you can get just this in a 12 volt configuration. This is the style of lights that was used on like the, I know that 69 Chevy that I have uses this style of light. So you can just get one from a vehicle like that.
One other thing to keep in mind, if you have backlit gauges, then you'll have to swap out the bulbs that are in here from 6 to 12 volt. The last step, this is our ammeter. This tells if our battery is charging or discharging. These are designed for generators. Generators don't put out very much current. This maxes out at 30 amps. Our 10SI generator that we put on here maxes out at 63 amps. If your battery is heavily discharged and it starts charging, you can go past this 30 amps. This isn't designed to have more than 30 amps running through it, and these can start on fire. You can get ammeters that go up to 60 amps, or you can just put in a voltmeter instead. Since this is a 12 volt system, we would want our charging voltage to be above 14 volts, about 14.4, 14.5 is ideal to charge the battery. If it's any higher, you know there's a problem with something in your alternator putting out a higher voltage, or if it's too low, like for instance, just 12 volt, then you know that your alternator is not charging. So right there's the back of our ammeter. On one side, we have the wire coming off of the generator, which is right there or the, the alternator now, it was coming off the generator. The other side is this wire right here that goes down and lands on the same wire that our battery cable lands on. So that concludes our video. Our alternator bracket we got from Steiner Tractor Parts. I'll put the part number in the description below. I hope you learned something. I hope this helped you out. And I hope you can get your project taken care of and swapped over. And I hope I'll see you again next time.